fire plan coordinates the artillery resources of a unit or formation so that their fire is directed effectively. The Forward Observation Officer, or FOO, is the vital link between the Supported Arms Commander and the artillery resources. Understanding the role of the FOO is the key to understanding how the fire plan works. The Forward Observation Officer's primary responsibilities are to advise the Supported Arms Commander on the use of artillery and other resources, to coordinate and issue the fire plan, and to implement the artillery portion of the fire plan. Advise, coordinate, and implement. To execute those functions effectively, the FOO has to understand thoroughly the Supported Arms Commander's objectives and his tactical plan. And he has to be an expert in the application of firepower so that he can present all the available options and resources to the commander. That means everything. Artillery, mortars, armor, close air support, tactical aviation, naval gunfire support. Using his training, he then melds these resources into a cohesive plan that will achieve the supported arms commander's aim. In either an offensive or defensive fire plan, the FOO must plan and execute fire so that all targets are adequately engaged by an appropriate weapon or group of weapons. Whether offensive or defensive, it's the supported arms commander's plan, not the FOO's. That's why the FOO always confirms the authority to modify the fire plan. Most commanders will delegate that authority, but the FOO must ask the question. There are three types of targets, planned, scheduled, and on-call targets. There are two kinds of planned targets. A planned target is one on which fire is pre-arranged. Scheduled targets are those on which fire is to be delivered at a certain time, while on-call targets are those on which fire is delivered when ordered. A target of opportunity is one that has not been previously planned or considered. Defensive fire targets, or DFs, are those targets designed to assist and protect a unit engaged in a defensive action. Despite their name, DFs remain an important part of offensive as well as defensive fire plans since every offensive fire plan must take into account the possibility of an enemy counterattack. Warfare today is much different from the set piece exchanges you'll find in the history books. The extremely high mobility and firepower of modern formations has increased the potential for rapid change in any tactical environment. Because of this, the five basic principles of fire planning are extremely important. These principles apply to all levels and types of fire plans. The first is cooperation between all areas involved in the operation. Cooperation demands effective, interlocking communications, proper sighting of key personnel, and the timely passage of information. The second basic principle of all fire plans is concentration of fire. The nature of the business is that there are frequently more targets than fire units. Dispersing fire to cover all of them won't do an effective job on any of them. So it's important for the FU to establish his priorities and concentrate fire on the most important targets first. Our third principle of fire planning is flexibility. The fire plan must be responsive to unforeseen changes in the tactical situation. This is primarily achieved by designing superimposed fire units into the fire plan. Units that can be lifted off and redirected at targets of opportunity without jeopardizing the success of the overall operation. Flexibility leads directly to the fourth principle, simplicity. A simple fire plan is quicker to arrange, easier to change, and less vulnerable to error. Simplicity equals flexibility. The fifth principle is surprise. Preparation should be concealed by carefully planning the amount of adjustment, smoke testers, and the sighting and concealment of observation posts. Theory is one thing, but to understand fully how a fire plan works, you have to see it in action. Let's assume that the combat team is advancing from its line of departure, which is off to the south of this model and designated Pine Cone, to its objective, designated Big Day, on the near bank of a river. During the advance, the combat team is tasked with destroying any enemy elements they discover within boundaries. Once the team has completed this mission, their new objective is to halt and consolidate their position at Big Day so that follow-up units can stage from this location for a continued advance.
In order to consolidate Big Day effectively, the Fu and the Support at Arms Commander will prepare a hasty defensive fire plan once they have consolidated their position. Uh, one, zero, four, four hours now? Yeah, right on, Joe. Okay. During the advance phase, well, the Support at Arms Commander receives his orders from the Commander, and the Fu receives the continuous fire support plan. Time, Joe. Okay. Like I mentioned in the O Group, the combat team will leave Pinecone. Our next step uh, is to go over a combat place. estimate an appreciation of the various factors that will have an effect on the combat team's rate of advance and the achievement okay, sir, of their mission. I'll be advancing up along with you and I'm going to put the MFC on the right. It's always the Support at Arms Commander's plan, but the possible presence of enemy and its effect on the combat team obviously can affect the fire plan as well. The combat team and the offense can suddenly be thrown into a defensive posture. That's why, as a Fu, you actively participate in the planning process and why you always have your DF plan ready. The Support at Arms Commander has just received a contact report and has adopted a covered position of observation. The FU has moved forward tactically to join the Support at Arms Commander. Right, sir, the, the job now is to work with the Commander to formulate an offensive fire plan for a hasty attack. All right, I spoke to Tango 2 Niner. The Commander will give the FU his concept of operations, the aim of the fire plan, its basic components, and, very critical, where, when, and for how long fire is needed. The offensive fire plan is the Commander's responsibility but he'll be relying on the Fu to advise, coordinate, and implement it. To do that effectively, the Fu has to completely understand the Support at Arms Commander's tactical plan. He or she has to know the form of the attack, as well as the attack position, and the dismount areas, areas where the participating troops will leave their transport and continue on foot. This information is an obvious consideration of the combat team's safety, and the proximity of the fire to friendly forces. He or she also has to know the objectives and the targets to be engaged. They will also have to accurately determine the identity, location, size, and composition of the targets themselves, as well as each target's degree of importance to the commander's plan. The actual weight of fire required is dictated by the degree of neutralization of the target the supported arms commander wishes to achieve. The FU has to be prepared to recommend the type of ammunition, the appropriate fire support resources, as well as the intensity and duration of fire required to achieve the desired effect. The supported arms commander will be relying on the FU to outline the various resources available to him. The scope of these resources will determine what superimposed fire units, if any, we can design into the fire plan. Since the FU has allocated a specific amount of ammunition for the fire plan, he'll have to hold a percentage in reserve to deal with on-call targets and targets of opportunity. If the fire plan requires the use of more guns and ammunition than the FU has readily available, he'll have to request the allotment of additional resources from higher artillery headquarters, advising them as soon as possible of the operation and giving them an outline of the fire plan itself. H hour, the time at which our combat team will cross the line of departure, is decided by the supported arms commander. Other timings, for example, from the attack position to the line of departure, and from the line of departure to the objective, can usually be established from the planned rate of advance and movement intended within the commander's plan. Besides being aware of the distances at which fire is to be lifted from the objective, the FU will have to know the time fire is to begin and end on each target. A 2-2, two -two, this is 2-2 two -two Bravo, in fire base now, out. The FU will also have to allow time for technical work and preparation at the guns, the adjustment or location of targets, and the passage of fire plan orders. The communications resources required for fire plan orders and the adjustment have to be coordinated so there's no conflict between the two areas. It's the FU's job to ensure that the fire plan begins on schedule. That's why time synchronization, making sure that all the elements of the fire plan are on a common time, is so important. It's important that the supported arms commander and the FU remain in contact with each other as the fire plan and the operation continue. The FU will adopt a position of observation that allows him or her to stay close enough to the supported arms commander to keep current with the tactical situation and at the same time effectively observe and engage targets in support of the plan. One, one to her left. One, two to her right. The supported arms commander will continue battle procedure while the FU adjusts as many targets as possible, observes the progress of the adjustment, and continues to work with him in obtaining more resources and selecting DFs according to the situation. HR, a 1130 hours, a Tango 22 acknowledge, over. Charlie Charlie 1, this is a 1 Niner, orders continue. 
Our successful implementation of the offensive fire plan for the hasty attack allowed the combat team to drive quickly through the early contact and reach the objective Big Day. Now, the Support at Arms Commander wishes to consolidate his gains at Big Day in order to provide a platform for fresh units to continue ahead. This will require us to formulate a defensive fire plan to protect this position. There are two ways of conducting defensive fire planning, bottom up and top down. The top down fire planning scenario where the supported arms commander receives his orders and the FU receives his defensive fire or DF list is becoming more common today. The FU and the supported arms commander will recce the ground, adding or subtracting DFs as necessary. Then the FU resubmits the DF list back up the chain for consolidation. Canadian doctrine, however, teaches the bottom up approach in which the FU and the supported arms commander recce the terrain, select DFs, and then send them up the chain for consolidation. A fire plan is a tactical plan for coordinating the fire of a unit or formation and its supporting assets. Its aim is to support the plan and objectives of the supported arms commander. The FU must understand completely what the commander wants to do and what his objectives are. Let's review the five basic principles common to all fire plans. Cooperation between all arms in the operation. That means putting your people in the right places and maintaining timely communications. Concentration of fire. This is a matter of priorities. Enough fire should be directed at the most important targets at the right time. Flexibility. A flexible fire plan allows fast, effective response to unforeseen changes in the tactical situation. Simplicity. Simplicity equals flexibility. A simple fire plan is quicker to arrange, easier to change, and less vulnerable to error. Surprise. Concealment of preparations is the key. It's always a supported arms commander's plan. The FU's job is to do everything possible to make it work. That means knowing what the supported arms commander wants to do, how he plans to do it, and why he wants to do it. The FU has to know where, when, and for how long the supported arms commander needs fire support. If the FU isn't sure about any of these things, he asks. The FU has three primary responsibilities to advise the supported arms commander on the use of the available fire support resources, to coordinate and issue the fire plan, and to implement the artillery portion of the fire plan. To do these things effectively, the FU has to be expert in the application of firepower. If I can leave you with one thing, it's that perfection in artillery fire planning is a moving target. Tactical situations arise from a constantly changing series of events, some of which the FU will be aware of, others that he can only anticipate or react to. That's why a Fu can never stop trying to become better at his or her craft, because that's what artillery fire planning is all about, defeating the enemy.